Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs>
the basic survival skills were similar. But I was getting really, really tired of PvP. I'd never played CSGO, PUBG or Counter-Strike. I was more interested in open world survival. You know, I like Fallout or... Um, Far Cry, that type of game. I can't remember how I learned of PvE, but that was definitely more what I was looking for. I tried some of the mega PvE servers, like PG UK Cherno, and I initially had fun. But they had way too many rules and requirements, and I didn't like zombie mechanics. I soon found myself on Heroes Livonia, back when the trader was at Lemborg. There I met some great people from all over the world. It was truly an international community, and they really helped me to find my footing. Glock Jim, Jack, Rambo69. In fact, after the trader was moved to the airport and the community fell apart, we all moved to Upriser Rostov, where we spent quite a long and very enjoyable time. There I met another Slovak biker, Griffin, and the fantastic admin team. JJ, the JJ Hardy, the Finnish bear hunter, Sneaky Pig, the mod designer, Rob Z, the owner, and the Welsh Dragon Nightkin, an extremely dedicated admin who actually played each new map as a noob to see what worked and what didn't. That's a rarity on Daisy servers. Then, like all Great servers, from one day to the next, Upriser Rostov emptied. Covid lockdown was coming to an end and people were returning to work. Others went looking for new maps and new experiences. I ended up following my friends onto Valhalla Livonia for a while, but the strong community had already cracked. Every player has different needs which is why it's so hard to have long-term relationships on day Z. Some just like building, some only looting, some just like hunting. Others want the extreme, zombie hordes, mutants, toxic zones. I prefer a much more realistic zombie apocalypse. Zim zombies hitting through cars and walls, Unkillable mutants and toxic bears, having to register bases on external websites or having a base restricted in size to a 3x3 three three with only two containers, these are all big no-nos for me. It's like, I nope my way out of there. And thus I wandered from map to map server to server. Some maps I tried many times in different forms but found each server lacking in what I required. Some like Essica and Kiemsi were cool but unfinished. And then I discovered Deer Isle. I can't even remember the server name but it was on Deer Isle I also discovered my longest running friendship with chubs. Due to the many restrictions we moved to another Deer Isle server, this time hosted by Atoms or Atom Z. And we called it home. If you're looking for the full PvE experience, giant bases, a plethora of vehicles from Raptor 4x4s to Bugattis, from helicopters to boats, then the admin VCOG provides them all. 
Without doubt, Deer Isle is the most developed and diverse map for adventuring. Atoms allows you to live like Pablo Escobar in order to pay for all the high-end gear. VCOG, Bushy, Tiny also regularly host cool events. It's an amazing place, it really, really is. And amazingly, they have a democratic system where players vote on what mods to have or not have. And the owner, admin, VCOG, listens. At first, it was just a rumour. A new map set in a fictionalised Afghanistan. After the copy and paste terrain of Chernarus, the frozen wastes of Namalsk, and the fields and forests of Enoch, Rostov and Deer Isle, the desert, and all the new gear to go with it, was extremely alluring. Luckily, our small crew, Chubbs, DM82 and myself, along with a handful of other Atoms regulars, were given the chance to better test Takistan. It seemed the ideal opportunity, until it was made clear that it would be full PvP only, and once again the cracks began to appear. You can't have a close community on a PvE map and then expect it to remain after the backstabbing and cutthroat existence on a PvP one. We begged for it to be made PvE player versus environment so we could call it home there are only a few Takistan PvE servers in existence while there are hundreds of PvP servers but no mines had been made up so we left PvE servers are hit and miss. Many are overcrowded with queues to get in. Many are overloaded with mods or ridiculously overpowered zombies and mutants. And many don't have a trader or a banking system. I was staggered to find that the Upriser team had emerged once more from the ashes and even had their own Takistan map. So our crew moved there. It was brutal, with virtually no loot and no trader. We managed to set up a small base in a shed, find some wheels and a radiator for a doorless Sarka, get ourselves basically gear geared, and then we called it quits. We'd already overdone Taki for atoms, and as yet there's not a not there's not an awful lot to do on that map so we were quite bored already right, left in 150 yeah I see that one I'm gonna have to <laughs> still missed it mine but <laughs> <laughs> I saw it <laughs> Fuck it. I knew it was coming up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is like Livonia here. Ah, uh, just not the fucking good loot in them. Banov is set in mid Slovakia, about three hours drive from where I live in the Banska Bystrica region. So that was extremely appealing. After going it alone on different servers and dying shortly after spawning, every time from starvation, disease, zombies or mutant animals on the different ban of incarnations, I was amazed that Upriser were providing their own version. He barked his last bark. So I can be safe to move now. 
Well, <laughs> I wouldn't quite say there, that. But... Now. Yeah. After much begging to Nightkin to put in a trader, our crew moved in and thrived. Been it. I got to the top and my vision vision went blurry. And it was there that I left two of the best friends I've ever made. Jason and Darren. And Grace. <laughs> Fuck! The lag is killing me. Oh, I can't run to you. Be careful. Get up high if you can. Jesus. I'm hiding in a toilet at the moment. I'm blocked inside a toilet. I often talk about parallel worlds and realities in my videos and about the possibility that we humans are actually living in a simulation like a computer game. A theory shared by the richest man on earth, Elon Musk. Daisy is a tantalizing first step towards humanity creating an alternate existence in an ethereal plane, that of the internet. On day Z, I built a house, I drove a car, I had to hunt to eat, I had good friends and also some cock-munching enemies. We had hopes, we had plans and we had failures. We had extreme highs and lows. We learned to trust and rely on each other. With AI constantly improving, along with graphics, online open world games such as DayZ are getting ever closer to becoming standalone realities. At present, new players or those who've been killed spawn in with basic clothes and equipment and have to st start the long process of gearing themselves up again. I can see future games requiring procreation and new players only being able to respawn or spawn as a child after a successful pairing of the parents. Much like real world human infants spawning with reduced knowledge and skills They'd have to grow and learn under the protection of their online family. It will be at that point that we, or at least the game's developers, Bohemia, would become as God. With global lockdowns and quarantine looking to be a stable for the near future, many will continue to look for an alternative existence online, where they can taste all the world has to offer and also make good friends. Sadly, this week my daughter came to ask for her computer back. So I've gone back to my old Linux system with integrated graphics, incapable of playing DayZ or most games. But I thoroughly enjoyed my time in the parallel reality known as DayZ. And as I spent my last few hours with my good friends and watched the sun setting over Banov, I hoped someday to return. There are more caves and vaults awaiting our exploration. There are more animals to be hunted, more bases to be built, more lives to lose from being kicked whilst flying a helicopter or from zombies when lagging out.
to all those who shared part of their lives with me on day Z, I thank you immensely. As always, be free.